You may have seen a piece he recently wrote for the New York Times. He's got this awesome Twitter handle called Modern Seinfeld, and he is so, so funny. And please give a warm welcome to Josh Gondelman. I'm going to tell a funny story about touching, I guess, <laughs> is what I'm going to do. Uh, and this is, here's the context for it. Yesterday was Yom Kippur, the Jewish Day of Atonement, and I generally try to reach out to people who I've wronged and try, try to set the record straight because I, I don't like unfinished business. And I, I don't like leaving it open-ended. And I think Yom Kippur, even though I'm not super religious, that's like kind of a great occasion to do that. So I always try to set things straight. And there's one person that I haven't been able to bring myself to uh, apologize to or uh, get on good terms with. And, I'll, and that, this is the story. I'll tell you that story. The, the, this is also the story I should tell you, the way I see it, is it's the story of my getting to vanquish a nemesis. <laughs> and that's impressive. Most people don't get to do that ever, and if they do, it takes like decades, right? You've gotta learn how to sword fight in a cave, find the six-fingered man who killed your father. There's legwork involved. <laughs> I handled my nemesis in half a week. That's incredible, right? <laughs> Three days, that's amazing. Here's something else I'll tell you right up top. My nemesis was the CEO of a pharmaceutical corporation. Yeah, and that sounds like a worthy adversary till I tell you he was the CEO of a pharmaceutical company that manufactured a penis numbing spray marketed towards premature ejaculators. So less of a formidable opponent because we're talking about a medical doctor who at some point in his life went, you know what, you guys work on cancer. I'm gonna hook it up for the dudes who think sex feels too awesome. That's. <laughs> Why? No reason. Have you been talking to Sheila? Uh, so the reason this guy's in my life at all is because I used to do, and I still do, I guess, a lot of writing for women's magazines. And an editor that I write for sometimes emailed me and was like, Josh, will you test and write about this penis numbing spray marketed towards premature ejaculators? And I said, like any man would, why would you even ask me that? That's never happened to me before. <laughs> And she responded by emailing me how much money she would pay me for it. And I sent back a one-word email, just, yes! And then I had to send a second email apologizing for how brief my initial email had been, <laughs> promising future correspondence would be more mutually satisfying, <laughs> offering to buy brunch the next day. You guys understand. <laughs> so I pick up the penis-numbing spray, and that night, I'm on a third date with a young lady, and we hadn't slept together at that point which becomes relevant in a moment. So we're drunk, and I mentioned this writing assignment I had, and she said, and I quote, I'm not into that at all, <laughs> which was very reasonable. As I mentioned, we hadn't had sex, and she didn't want me coming at her for the first time with like a dead-eyed, remorseless, <laughs> Javier Bardem in No Country for Old Men boner, <laughs> just deciding who lives and dies by the flip of a coin on the tip. She says, I'm not into that. And I say, incredibly righteously, fine, then I'll take care of that on my own. <laughs> Which is the most like heart any man has ever put into declaring he was leaving a date to masturbate at home. And that's what I did. I went home and I used the maximum recommended dosage of penis numbing spray. I used 10 spritzes, which is a lot. I wanted to use one more. Uh, but I, I did, I, so I could go, oh, my penis goes to 11. But I didn't want to potentially ruin my body forever over a spinal tap reference <laughs> that no one would enjoy. So I used 10 spritzes and I got to work. And I don't know, it wasn't great. I don't know if this is true about other men here or if it's just me, but a big part of my enjoyment of any sexual experience is being able to feel my penis. And <laughs> I couldn't. It was like listening to a fish song. I was 25 minutes in, just no end in sight. <laughs> a lot of aimless noodling, like, boo, is this still the same thing? I thought the live version was supposed to be good. This should be a new thing by now. Should have finished. So eventually I do finish, and it wasn't great. Like, you know how normally when you finish that, like for a guy, it's like a moist firework? Uh, it's very exciting, a lot of fun. This time it wasn't. It was like sometimes, the closest frame of reference I have is sometimes you're eating pizza and there's one slice left, 
and you could either find a Tupperware or some saran wrap and put it away, but instead of doing that, you reluctantly kind of wood chip it down like Steve Buscemi at the end of Fargo. That's the second and final character actor in this joke. Anyway, it was like that, but down here is the point. So I finish, I file the, I write the article, I file it, it runs on the magazine's website a few days later, and uh, the, I get an, uh, an email from the CEO of the company, and he is mad. Probably because I said the words in that article that I just said to you out loud now. <laughs> He's not happy. And I didn't even read his email. That's a true fact. Honest to goodness, haven't read it to this day. But I know he was angry because the title of the email was, This is ridiculous. <laughs> and I could tell by the little uh, preview that popped up on my phone that the body of the email wasn't like a video of a pug pushing another pug in a stroller. <laughs> so it's like, he's probably mad at me. I'm not going to deal with this. So I, uh, I, di I didn't. I said to no one, He'll hear from me when I hear from his lawyer, which is just a thing I saw John Hamm say once on TV. It sounded cool. <laughs> so the next, I go to bed. The next morning, I wake up to an email from his lawyer. I was like, touche, nemesis. The game is afoot. <laughs> so I had to get a lawyer to deal with his lawyer because I wasn't going to let him push me around because I couldn't go to jail over this. Do you understand what I mean? Because when you go to jail, they don't let you bring your penis numbing spray to keep the other dudes at bay. They, it's not, they take it at the door. They're like, this is jail, not a swingers party, you creep. So, they, so I, I got a lawyer, and my lawyer and his lawyer went back and forth for three days, and I was riddled with anxiety. And I don't know what it takes, what lawyers do over three days. I assumed they were just leaving each other voicemails like, objection, overruled. <laughs> Because everything I know about the law, I learned from iced tea. And <laughs> after three days, I get a call from my lawyer who's just like, don't worry about it, dude. Everything's cool. And I was like, can you not talk like that? You're a lawyer. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, don't worry about it. Everything's fine. There's no further recourse he'll take. We changed a couple words in the article, and you're in the clear. And I felt an immense sense of relief. I felt incredible. And then... 30 minutes later, I get another email from the CEO, which I didn't read, but I did reply to. <laughs> I wrote, dear sir, actually I wrote dear Chad. That's what I wrote. His name wasn't even Chad. <laughs> he just had a Chad-like demeanor, so that's what I called him. I was very cocky, I was on top of the world. I wrote, dear Chad, I believe our business to be concluded. I expect no further communication from you. I apologize for being brief, but it appears that's kind of your thing, winky face emoji. <laughs> Good luck with all your penis numbing endeavors, both professional and I'm assuming personal tongue out emoji. <laughs> Good day, Josh. And I wrote the email that way for two reasons. One, I knew by writing a terse professional email, I'd be on the record <laughs> saying, you're out of my life. Back off. I don't want this anymore. We're done. Two, I knew by writing a terse, professional email, I would make him furious, <laughs> inciting him to reply right away, which he did. He emailed me immediately. I didn't read that one either. I did write back one sentence, all caps. I said good day, sir. <laughs> Nemesis vanquished. So I still kind of feel like I owe him an apology. <laughs> But a bigger part of me thinks we're even and he can fuck off forever. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Have a great night. Here comes the world.